Hello, it's Ricardo and I'm playing Elite Dangerous. Now you find me in the Conflux area of space. Now in particular, for this part of the video, and it's a long video this time, I'm on approach to the Alpha Settlement in Pru Axis TY minus J A64. Coordinates been on the screen and I'll also put them in the comments. Now this is a bunch of settlements that you find by visiting a probe and we'll discuss going to visit probes a little bit later on in this video. But these are abandoned settlements by the Dynasty Expedition. They've put beacons in space, they put a settlement on a planet, and there are a few materials around to pick up, and there's also logs. So here we are, and we're on approach. Quite a few visuals of the overlying area, and every settlement is slightly different, and there are four settlements in this video. So it's a rather long video, it's in for an hour, but hopefully you'll stay with me uh, and we'll get through it. So I'm still in the ass, but I'm still rocking that ye olde livery colour. I'm not sure I like it. I think I like the yellow one better anyway. But I've landed and I've pointed the beams of light directly at the settlement. Try and cast a bit more light and ambience on the area. Now by zooming around you can see the habitat modules. There's what looks to be like gas storage. There's materials scattered around. And there's also a beacon. Or data point, as you see on some of the other installations. Now zooming around, I mean, it gives all the idea when it gets into focus. And I have a bit of trouble with focus and zooming around these. Um, it gives the impression of it being desolate. It's been abandoned for years. That sort of thing. And, and that, that's a good thing, okay? It, it lends the atmosphere of things. In some of the settlements, I've found some of the graphics have been um, a bit jagged or you've got platforms up in the air. But generally, it's been pretty good. And I think Frontier Developments have done a very good um, job at making these settlements look abandoned, look desolate, like they haven't been used in years. From the different views, you can tell it, they're not huge, not big settlements. You know, you're not going to get lost driving around them. But generally, there are four data points around each one of these areas. And as a result of this, you are going to get a little bit of story for each one. Also, you do tend to get down to the planets. You get some good visuals of the entire area as well. Especially pay attention to the sky. It's something that it's always there, you know, but no one ever really has a good look at. And it's there and the stars are nice and bright. You know, as you see some of the star clusters, you know, it, 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 it is quite good. So after that quick fly around, and it was a bit haphazard, I know, we're gonna get into the old scarab and have a look around. Generally, I found driving around these settlements easier than trying to use the external camera it's from a vantage point of your ship. Obviously, the bubble at which the camera will moves with you as you drive your scarab around. You can get a better look and a closer look. And you're going to have to get out there anyway to have a look, uh, pick up those materials and also to pick up um, that data from the data terminals. So as I mentioned, each one of these settlements is slightly different from the other ones. And as we go through this video and we'll re revisit all four of the settlements, you'll see what I mean. There are similarities. They're similar, but they're not the same. Also make sure you've got enough material space to pick up some of these materials. Some of them are rare materials. Some of the materials that you newly discover. Um, not only are there things like scrap metal, but there's ceramic capacitors, there's polymer capacitors, all this stuff that, well, hey, you may have encountered, depending on where you've been. I haven't. And as you can see there, there's a, a comms, 
that you can scan your data link scanner make sure you scan them it does give you a little bit of story and you can put all those bits of story together and see what happens to the expedition and why it was out here and there's obviously something going on obviously something going on and as in this message they've hauled us out into the galaxy lots of uh, different things to see here and each one of these logs will add to the ambience of what's going on so it's quite simple to drive around and pick these up also you can pick up the materials on your way as I mentioned I found that just driving up and down in straight lines up and down the the streets as it were um, as opposed to going all over the place is a better way of finding all the logs you do get a better idea of where these things are by flying around in the ship or using the external camera see so we've got another comms beacon as well now as I said there's four um, logs per site so you'll know it's probably easy to read them all in one go as opposed to individually that way you get a better sense of what's going on now my journey started off with the fact that I needed something from Professor Palin and I had to unlock him so as a result of that I had to travel 5,000 light years away from the bubble however once I got out here I didn't want to turn back there's quite a lot to do out here and also the graphics and the visuals are more visually stunning a lot of people say oh I'm bored of the Elite Dangerous well you're only just scratching the surface there's so much out there and um, you know congratulations to Frontier Developments for what they've done in creating this game this game truly is I mean it, it is it is very it, it's it's vast and I think it is quite deep as well um, there was a lot of people who initially said oh you know it's five miles wide and one each one inch deep I think that's that's not a fair assumption to make it really is you know a huge game and people who are saying that might just be doing space combat they might just be doing doing trading or or a little bit of both but are they doing all three are they getting out there are they exploring as well so here i am scanning a data point and that'll give you some encryption keys always worthwhile doing and taking advantage of all the things that are actually on the planet's surface And we've still got a few other log sites to visit actually on this base. As you can see, the points of interest around here are shown as yellow dots on my HUD. Maybe slightly different on your HUD because um, I've obviously changed the colours. Uh, and if people like and put in the comments section, I will release um, the colours that I've used on the HUD. I've had a few requests already on some of my videos. And some of those commands have been quite happy. Now this is only available so far to do on the PC. There are tools you can get to do on the PC or you can edit a particular file. And I'll do a video, I think, a bit later on this week um, on how you do that. Or, hey, Google it. Google it and find out. I'll release the details and the numbers that make up my HUD colors and... Um, if you like them, use them. If not, hey, pick your own using some of the vast tools that are out there as well. There's a HUD color changer specific application that is quite good and actually gives you a preview as well of, of what you're doing. Now I've got here quite quickly by using the Neutron Superhighway. The Neutron Superhighway allows you to fly close to a Neutron Star, supercharge your frame shift drive and then jump for me up to 150 light years in my ASP, though I've got an engineered ASP. Though you can severely increase your jump ranges. This I think has cut the journey to some of these locations down quite considerably. And it's better than just fly into a system, honk the hold horn, and then, you know, refuel, scoop some stuff up and then fly off. So it does give a little, little bit of variety. And I think you are getting the most part out of the game. So some of the tools you want to be looking at are edsm.net uh, and that will give you some of the points of interest to go and explore when you're out here, like this conflicts, conflict settlement. 
And also, in addition to that, you want to use a tool like Spanch. Now, Spanch will allow you to navigate from point A to point B, and it'll give you the preference of the Neutron Stars as well. So you can use the Neutron Super Highway. And there's a video that I've released recently on that as well. Now, I've also got a Patreon channel, um, a Vidme channel, a Twitch channel, and of course, the YouTube channel. So if you like what you see, please, by all means, subscribe to that. It does help me out, and it does give me an indication of what people like and what people like in regard regards to the videos that I put up for Elite Dangerous and indeed other games as well. So we're doing pretty well on the log so far. We've got log two. Log three. And log four. So now it's time to get out of here and get on back to the ASP and move on to our next location. The next location will of course be a beacon which will point us to the location of the next abandoned site. So this is goodbye to the Alpha site, onto the Beta site. So here we go, we're back in the old ASP, the Inquisitive Badger, and we're off. So the plan is now is we're gonna to jump to the next system, and all these systems are within about 20 to 25 light years of each other um, and I say I'll put all the coordinates for the systems in this comment section and in the, the explanation section of this video. So here we are we've jumped into the next system which is the PRU AESCS space HW dash SB 31 dash 2 system. Now I've realized I need to do a little bit of refueling here because I've used up quite a bit of my reserves wombling around this part of the galaxy. And when you're using the Neutron Superhighway, it's always important to remember to keep your fuel reserves, you know, where they are. Very important. And I've locked on to the unauthorized beacon, unauthorized comms beacon in the area. Now this beacon will transmit either at the top of the hour 15 minutes past the hour, 30 minutes past the hour, or 45 minutes past the hour, depending on what beacon it is. Now the thing with these beacons is this, you don't know when it's going to transmit, so you may have to just sit around and just wait, or come back to it and put the time in. And that's the frustrating thing about it, or of course you can google it and find out what other commanders have done, but at one stage of the game there's been a poor commander sat there for an hour patiently watching the clock to see when these beacons are going to transmit. Now this one is orbiting the sun at the, the entry point, so it's not too far to go and get. Now when it does transmit, it's going to transmit itself in a coded message. Now I'm not going to put you through the entire hour wait. This deep space beacon here, I'll cut it all down and I'll condense it for you. So here you can see is what you get and what it phonetically spells out in the NATO phonetic alphabet. Now this NATO phonetic alphabet can be deciphered and it's not really as bad as what you think it is. Okay? What you have to do is, and I'll put it on the screen a little bit later, is put the words or letters Exodus, extract those letters out of the alphabet and then put the remaining letters of the alphabet following on from the word Exodus, and then use that as a one-to-one -one mapping to decipher what this message that's been transmitted, encrypted from the satellite, actually means. Okay, now, I've done the hard work for you, and this is what this message actually means. So a Dynasty Expedition Beacon, 
Gives you the rally point, the complex pro access, 31-2 mode standby. Okay, so you're looking for CD1. So that's great. So I'll be fair, I did go on the internet and check out for the... Now on the system map, to save you flying around looking at all these planets, I found planet CD1 for you. So there it is in the system map. So we're going to head on over there. And once we're there, it's going to be a case of flying around or actually looking for the coordinates that I've found, reaching the coordinates, and then finding the next settlement. So here we are we're on approach now to CD1, and we've just broken into the pull of the planet, and we're en route to the area that we found. Okay, now normally it'd be transmitted by the beacon. Those coordinates have been found by people doing Mark 1 eyeballs over the planet and finding those settlements. Again, started to get some good feel of how alone you are out here in regards to the terrain. Not a commander in sight. So here we are at the coordinates for the beta site. Um, the beacon, as I said, was in orbit around the sun. I put the longitude and latitude, I'll put them on the screen. A little bit later on, or I'll put them in the comments section a little bit later on. A much smaller site than what we had at the last site, at the Alpha site. And um, I've kind of got that ASP hovering to give a little bit of light on the areas we zoom around with the external camera. You can see a few artifacts, some graphics floating um, a few feet off the ground, which is unfortunate. It's not soul destroying, you know, but you know, I think we hold frontier developments to such a high standard with Elite. It's a shame that when they do, you know, in some cases, drop the ball, you could say that, you know, everyone tends to jump on it. It's not the end of the world, and I think it's acceptable with other games, whereas Frontier is such a graphically stunning game and trying to do so much with what it's, it's being given. When you see these artifacts and graphics, you know, misplaced on a, on a, a ground surface, you know, it kind of lets it down a little bit, but hey, it doesn't spoil the entire game. You know, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, you know, it's, it's just, you just go, oh, you know, oh, Frontier, please fix it. Um, I'm sure they will, you know, in future patches, but you know, there's other things to fix in the game, like game mechanics, but they go back and start tweaking things such as that. So I'm gonna go and move the ASP off to a corner where I can actually put down and get the SRV out. Um, that just shone some light on the area. Let's get into that SRV now, drive around and pick up some logs. Some nice little touches on this um, deployment are, I haven't really seen them in some of the others, or I wasn't paying attention, are these cryogenic pods. And this is what they are, they're cryogenic pods. And if we zoom in closer, you can see there's all cabbages and lettuces on the racks. How cool is that? So you've got a food source being grown in space. So hydroponics, everybody, or whatever it is they're using. I suppose we'd use hydroponics. So as you can see, I've parked the ASP elsewhere. And I think before I got the, the SRV out on this occasion, I'd have a, a more um, concise fly around. Doesn't seem to be many, any materials to pick up. So it's gonna be a case of drive around, get the logs, and then get on to the next point of interest which indeed will be the Gamma site. So this is site beta. Let's deploy. Here we are in our SRV. Let's have a good drive around. So some of these planets as well are gonna be mineral rich. So if you wanted to go um, material hunting with all the rocks that are flying around, then you could do, you could do that if you wanted to. Some of the planets as well have got some uh, geological features like volcanoes on them as well. Um, and I'll cover that briefly in, in another video because on the Gamma site, I believe there was volcanoes. Um, so you can drive straight under this. That's a shame, isn't it? But let's not go on about it. It's there. We have to, we have to live with it. 
we have to live with it. So okay, let's get into the area and get some of those um, log terminals scanned. So as I mentioned in the other outpost, these terminals are not too hard to find. You know, have a good look at the, the conflux beta, the conflux beta sign. It's great. No terminal uh, by the sign this time. That's a little bit further on up. But you can find them easily on your scanner by highlighting the yellow sections. Now I did try to drive through here. You can't get through here. You can't get through under the building. That would be crazy when you're driving a little bug with um, a dual machine gun on the top of it. So, um, hey, there we go. There's the comms uplink. Let's get in there, give it a scan. Now we know from past experience there's going to be four logs for this settlement. And we'll review all those later. So knowing that there's four, there's no need to go back in and out, in and out all the time. So, let's be on our merry way. Always good to take the handbrake off, I suppose. And not crash into anything. I'm a terrible SRV driver. Absolutely terrible. So time now to go past some of the other structures. And this space isn't very big, so it's not going to take you very long to get around should you get all the way out here. I know there's been a couple of commanders in regards to some of the other videos I've been doing haven't been too far behind me. So nothing on that one particular section, so we're going to swing back around and go around the centre of the, of the area and see what we can pick up. And we've got one off to the right hand side. Let's get over there, get that scanned. So obviously this, this colony likes its cabbages. There's quite a few hydroponic gardens here and there. So we've scanned that. Let's get on over, see what you can find over here. Nothing down there. Oh yes, there is. Here we go. Hidden right at the very outskirts of this particular outpost. Let's get this scanned. Let's back off a little bit. Yeah, there we are. And onwards to the next one. So that's three down now, I believe. One more to find. Shame there's no materials in this section though, however. And thank you to those who are still with me on this video. It's quite a long video. I did debate breaking it up into different sections. However, I thought, well, let's just get it all done and over with in one go and put a big one hour video on YouTube. I don't know if anyone's gonna watch it, but I think half the fun of Elite Dangerous, I find for me, I'm enjoying documenting my voyages around the galaxy. Whether people watch it or not, it's immaterial to me. And to be fair, not a lot of people do, but I'm fine with it. Always nice to have more subscribers though. Makes you think that you're doing something right. So we just gone and scanned the nav point and we've got some encryption codes, always handy. But we're in search of that final lock. Now following our map, our route of traversing down, we can find there's the final nav point there, or final beacon point. We can scan it from quite a distance off. And here we go. So we've got quite a few now. So in log one, here are the details. Talking about which space. And all the bizarre happenings, and lights following them in which space. Could this be the Thargoids? Of course the Thargoids have now been prevalent. Now I'm on the other side of the galaxy. 
typical. You know, I was down in Maya a couple of weeks ago, no problem at all, having some of the Athargoid crash sites. I go on holiday, come back, everything's blown up down in Maya. There's Thargoid bases left and right. I haven't got a secure enough cargo hold to take some of the artifacts without corrosive damage to the ship. So I've had to go and do the Palin trip. And here I am on the other side of the galaxy, virtually. I know I'm not literally on the other side of the galaxy, but um, I'm quite proud of the action. Though thinking about this though, I thought, hey, why not? You know, and I'll get and do the Thargoid bit all in my good time when some of the hubbub has, has died down, you know? Um, you're less likely to get shot, so I generally tend to play in open mode anyway. Not that I'm scared of being shot, but it's, it can be a pain. You can fly miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and then get ambushed by six or seven players, you know? And you think, well, okay, fair enough. So we've reviewed the logs now and it talks about witch space and all the strange happenings that are actually in witch space. So let's pack that SRV away, get into the trusty ASP, the inquisitive badger, and move on to the next point. Now the next point is going to be another beacon, in another system that I'll put the details on the screen momentarily. This beacon will then point us to another outpost. Quite a long and laborious sort of um, procedure to go through, but it does tell a story. And that's why I think people are lacking with Elite Dangerous. They're, they're not evolving themselves into the narrative. So the next system that we want, is only a short hop away. Quite easy to do. Let's take off. Let's navigate to the area. Let's get out of Dodge. So now we're actually getting out of the system, getting away from the planet. It's time to jump to our next location. And as we saw, it's only a short hop away. And the next location is in the PRU AES CS OI K A64 0. Now here we are, we've found the beacon, and it's quite easy. It, to, it shows up on the, um, on the nav screen. As you can see from the picture in picture, you know, it was only a short hop to get here. Now, this beacon, much as where it was before, it transmits either the top of the hour, quarter past the hour, half past the hour, or quarter to the hour, depending on what probe it is. And very much so, and I've saved this message for you here, right? That's what you get, all in the NATO phonetic alphabet. Now, not to labor the point, this translates to this. So we know that there's gonna be another base on this section, the rally point 1A. So we're looking for 1A. So, hey, that's great. So time to leave this beacon now and move off. I'll actually check the internet to be perfectly honest with you to look for the gamma site. Um, because I couldn't find it for the life of me. But here it is. Look at that. It's cool. Um, and it's the 64.2 and 74.4. So in the positives, not the negative. 64.2 and 74.4, longitude and latitude. A slightly larger base, again, like, like uh, well, it's larger than what the beta facility was. The gamma facility has got some materials as well laying around. A nice arch that you can try and... Well, I tried to fly through it, but I couldn't get the ship through it. But hey, not, not to worry, not to worry. So again, you got some food pods, and I apologize for some of the camera work, but as we get into the SRV now, from a sort of third person sort of view, we can get that old cargo scoop up, and we can start cargo scooping up some materials, and some of the materials are quite rare. Also, scanning some of those beacons as well, those event, um, those, those comms units, okay? That's going to tell us a little bit more of the story of what's going on. And so far we've had staffers, we've had navigation, um, there's engineers who tell their story as well. And it's all about, it's all shrouded in mystery about what's going on here. And the Conflux expedition is indeed dropping beacons off and we've seen the beacons. But for some reason all this is being kept from their crew. So we've seen the strange lights following um, the ship as reported by the navigation officer as well you know um, the ship is being stripped down specifically for jumping and how it's taken five months to get here in an anaconda 
This is what the Anna, this is what the ship was. Stripped down for um, for travel, not for combat. They've flown out here, dropped these bases off, and then their plan is to head back. Zui and I were still searching for some of the comm beacons. And because the settlement isn't that bad, you know, as in before, you can go and um, quite easily find them. I've already accessed that one. Silly me. On for the next. So it does sort of like paint the picture like, well, where did they get all that from? And why would they build an arch? And what was the point of that? Is it going to, to be a more permanent base? What happened? Nobody really knows. So just a forward operating base as well, that if something happens with a Thargoid invasion, they can get out of Dodge and they're already set up quick. A bit like how I suppose they would do the Mars, the Mars missions um, in real life. They would send items in advance. So again, now we're still driving down, we're coming round to it, we're looking for the... Another log. And now it'll be time to get back into that ASP and get on with what we're doing. There it is on the right hand side, just around the corner. So we've collected what's been lying around and what needs to be collected. scan this beacon. Final one coming up now, that's three down. If you can scan that from a distance. And then go and pick up some of the materials that we've missed on our first pass around. Obviously my materials are full. So with a bit of material space now freed up, I got rid of some scrap metal. You watch, the engineer's gonna want some scrap metal when I get around there. I can collect some of these more sought after items. Right, let's get going. So this base I thought was better than the last. Um, I thought it was nicely planned out. There was no graphic problems. There was no graphics floating in midair, no structures in midair where they should have been properly grounded on the floor. Gave the impression that it should have been much more and there's been some damage. And it's been here a long time and perhaps that archway should have survived a bit better. You know, does it look like it's been made out of the, the deck plates of a ship? Who knows, but where is the ship? Let's look at the logs. This is Gamma Mission, log number one of four. And now log two. And now log three. 
Conflux Gamma Mission Log 3 of 4. And now the final log. Now with all those logs read, it's time to get back to the ASP and move on to the last site in this video. And thanks very much for sticking with me if you have indeed stuck with me. It's off to the Delta site. Now I haven't done these in particular order. I've tried to. Obviously Delta comes before Gamma. But that's how I've done it, that's how I've put it together. So you're gonna have to forgive me on that one. So we're taking off and let's get out of Dodge. Quite a nice base that. Now, the next base, we find ourselves on more rocky terrain. And on that planet, and I'll put it in the, in the details as well, you can go and find geysers and volcanoes. Fire coming out of the ground, everybody. It won't be in this video, but it'll be in the next one that I do. However, you do get some good shots of flying through a canyon as well on approach to the base. So again, we're well and truly on our way. We're gonna break out of the planet's mass lock and jump to the next beacon location. So here we are with the next and final location, the Gamma site in PRU AESC space NC dash M space D7 dash 192. Now the Delta Site Beacon is in orbit around planet A3 and much as the same it will transmit at a different interval whether that be on the hour, quarter past the hour, half past the hour or at 45. In particular this beacon transmits 45 minutes past the hour so you know 45 minutes and it'll give you the following message, which of course I've gone and translated. Again, use the cipher with the word Exodus in front of the alphabet and then remove the letters included in the word Exodus out of the alphabet, map one to one, and that's your cipher. So Dynasty Expedition gives us D7192 Rally point is A3A. So here we are in planet A3A. We found the coordinates at minus 53.36 and minus 48.91. And we are on approach. Again, quite a sizable settlement. Let's get that ASP parked and take a look at what we found. It's a shame though, however, they haven't installed lights on the planet. They can go to a generator in your SRV and then turn the lights on to give yourself a bit more ambient light. And perhaps the lights would be on a timer, but hey, so it is quite dark and I apologize for the level quality of the, but there's no sun. Okay, there's no sun here. Not at the moment anyway. So we've got a couple of structures. We've got a big tower in the middle, some habitat structures, storage canisters, and the like. Having a look around as well, we found some of this, uh, some logs we've got to upload. So again, there'll be four logs. And there's also materials, materials to collect as well in the area. So let's get that SRV deployed and get out and find those materials.
Okay, let's roll. So we're taking nice and slow because it's quite a rocky terrain. Let's move around. And approach a settlement that is seems to be just over that ridge, but it's not too far away at all. We're just parked on the side of a hill. This planet is very rocky. Like I said, volcanoes to be found. Volcanoes can be found at the following coordinates. Longitude and latitude. Longitude first, 45.6169. That's 45.1. 45.6169 and 159.3895. So those are the volcanoes you can find at that area. They're in a crater. I'll give you a clue, okay? They're in a crater. So we've had a look around, we're looking at the Conflux Delta Site sign, here it is, bit of a selfie, click, yeah we know we've been here, and we'll put that in our photograph album before I do another album of photographs that I've collected of screenshots from my travels around the galaxy, especially from over here outside the bubble. So from a quick zoom around, Materials scattered all over the place. We'll pick those up, no dramas. I think it's worthwhile getting rid of some of the old, more readily accessible materials and picking up the materials that you get here. Who knows? what you may need them for to engineer any new weapons that are coming in 2.4. Now Frontier have also mentioned in 2.4 that there are going to be new weapons to fight the Thargoid invasion, and you can only hazard a guess of what those are going to be. I, for one, I think we're going to need them, and I hope they expand the, the ship slots as well for these weapons, because being limited to what you can carry in your ship, I get it, but some of the bigger ships, you shouldn't be limited at all. You should be able to stock that thing up with as, all right, not as many weapons as you can you can carry. That's ridiculous. But there should be a special, special weapons modification slot to help him to combat that Thargoid threat. Now, not too far away from here, there's going to be a Guardian's outpost or a Guardian's settlement. And I say not too far, it doesn't look too far on the map, but you can guarantee it's going to be a good couple of thousand light years or a thousand light years away from my current location. That's going to be my next destination. Now in this video, I'll give it a break for a bit. Um, it's been hard work doing this video, especially narrating it as well, after I've put it together. And visiting four sites, collecting all the logs and the materials. You know, it, it, it's been quite hard work. In addition to that, also finding those beacons. And the internet has, has helped greatly. And thank you to those commanders who have put some sections on Reddit um, that have helped me out considerably about that. Without that, I couldn't have found it. And without that, I couldn't have found things in this video. So two materials relatively close by here. So we're going to scoop those up. You've already scanned that. Galvanizing alloys, mechanical equipment, it's all out here. Bit of a poke to get you if you're looking for something specific, mind you. You're never guaranteed what you're going to get, but it's been quite a good haul. I'm virtually up to my full capacity on materials as it is. So, um, Getting back to an engineer and getting all those things used on some of the ships that I've got as well is going to be a bonus. Of course, my priority when I get back is get down to Maya and get to Palin. And that's going to be thousands and thousands of light years. I think my only hope really is to go forward in order to go back and get to another section, perhaps Jack's station. I'm kind of hoping there's going to be a shipyard there. So here we go, we're picking up the last couple of 
materials now. And we're virtually there with the logs. And of course, tonight, Game of Thrones night. The return of Game of Thrones, everybody. Sky Atlantic. We'll probably have five episodes of Talky Talky, one episode of people killing each other. Who knows? So there's a settlement comms unit. We're scanning that. That looks like we're all done. So time to review those logs. So log one. So we've had word from a navigator talking about lights. We've had and, and the, the hassles of navigating Anaconda. How beacons are being placed, and it's all very secretive. How the Anaconda is the ship that the expedition was traveling in and how it was stripped down. Problems with hyperdrive. People get into their destination as quickly as they possibly can on a, a time constraint, foregoing stuff like maintenance and then suffering catastrophic hyperdrive failures. How logs are being ejected. But if logs were ejected, how do they get down here? Makes you wonder. Could be an error in the story. So that was the conflux. Delta outpost. We visited in this video Alpha, Beta, Gamma and Delta where we've gone and looked at the logs and collected their materials and it's told us a bit of a story. So as you can see with the SRV parked in the middle it does give a very isolated look and that planet with its rings rising just above that mountain range as well. There's a bit of a picture postcard, a bit of a Kodak moment. So that's been a short mission. It's taken me about two days to do and about two hours to edit the video together. So if you're still with me, thank you so much for watching. It's been great. I've been Ricardo and this has been this conflux settlements in the part of the dynasty expedition. So once again, thanks very much. Please look out for more videos in the series as I continue my travels into deep space. See you soon.